Mr. Wara here. Welcome to my lair. This is it, my friends, my math cave. It's a cave in the visual land. Welcome, we are, oh, do we have a doozy of a video for you today. We are looking at the objective here. As you can see, that you students will be able to, what are they going to be able to do? To divide a unit fraction by a whole number. Okay, let's go ahead and get going here. Woohoo! Cassandra buys two pounds of pecans. Mm, pecans. I don't know if you like pecans, but they're pretty good nuts. I like them. Anyway, nonetheless, it says if Cassandra puts two pounds in each bag, how many bags can she make? All right, that seems kind of simple, doesn't it? I know mean, you're thinking, okay. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, you know, Mr. Warrell, we can actually solve this in our heads. And I agree. However, we're going to write a division equation. So if we have two pounds, this becomes our dividend because we keep using these words dividend, divisor, quotient. Well, we're going to get, we are going to get to the point where we know these terms so well. So if we have two pounds, that's our dividend. We're dividing by, and we're dividing by two because that's the size of the group. Okay, the size of the group is two. And that is obviously going to equal just one bag. It means we can make one group of two. Okay? Ah, no. Let's go ahead and change it up a little bit here. Okay? Now, if Cassandra puts one pound in each bag, how many bags can she make? Okay, now our problem has changed a little bit here because now we don't have two pounds. We only have one pound. Okay, keep in mind, we still, uh, Cassandra still has two pounds of pecans. But it says if she puts one pound in each bag, how many bags can she make? So we're still going to have that dividend of two. And then we're going to go ahead and divide that. But our division now is going to be different because the size is going to be one pound. That's our, our uh, size group here, one pound. Then we're going to equal, and that's going to equal two bags. You see how that division sentence represents this problem. Two pounds divided by the one pound in each bag gives us two bags. All right, now let's really up the ante here as we just keep going on. And this is to understand, um, we've been writing division sentences for the situation uh, with Cassandra, but now it's changed yet again. This time it says, what if she puts a half pound in each bag? How many bags can she make? Let's think about that for a second. What would that division sentence look like? Let's go ahead. Let's follow the pattern. We had two pounds of pecans. That becomes, that's our dividend. We're dividing it, and the size of that group is going to be a half pound because Cassandra is going to put a half pound in each bag. Now, two divided by one half. How many bags will we need? Do you think uh, the answer is going to be more or less than two? Well, as I looked at the other problems, I saw a pattern. 2, but two divided by 2 equaled 1. 2 divided by 1 equals 2. And now I think 2 divided by 1 half, well, it's going to be more than 2. Because the more we're cutting each pound into halves, that's going to make more groups. So I can visualize that, that each whole pound is going to have two halves. So there should be four half pounds uh, in two, or four half pounds in the total, which was our dividend of the two pounds. Let's see about making, let's use a rectangular uh, array here, like a rectangle, to show this amount. Okay, so I'm going to show on, in, this, in our little tape diagram here, that that total was two pounds of pecans. Now, this has been cut into two. Uh, right here, you can see the halfway point. One pound is here, and then the other half, so it's been cut in half. So each piece here represents one pound of pecans. Now, we're going to go ahead and think of folding this half in half. And now you can see we have one, two, three, four halves all together. Uh, so this is going to be zero. This is going to be one pound, and this is going to be two pounds, showing like our tape diagram. Well, here if we write this in fraction form, this would be zero over two, the starting point. Here is our one half. Here would be 
we would say 2 over 2 because we're counting by halves here. Therefore, this would be 3 halves. And over here, we have 4 halves. So there are 4 halves in 2 holes. So let's write that down. So we have 2 divided by 1 half equals 4. She can make 4 bags. By what do we need to multiply the quotient so that we could check our work? Wouldn't that be the divisor? And remember, the quotient was the answer in a division problem, so isn't that the 4? So couldn't we then take that quotient, 4, times the divisor, which was 1 half, which is equal to 2, or if you want to think of it, 2 is 1 half times 4. This is also equal to, you can put the 1 times 4, much like we did here, over 2, which is equal to, and I'm going to bring that down here, 4 over 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is also equal to 2. So are we correct? Yeah, I think we worked it out really nice. Let's look at another problem that also addresses. So this is still the, we'll call it the Cassandra problem. Sorry, Cassandra, it's a problem. It's a math problem. If she puts one third pound in each bag, how many bags can she make? Well, again, let's keep following that pattern. We learned that the dividend, the dividend was two. We're dividing that whole, but now this time we're, our, our sized group, meaning the size of our group, is going to be one third. Okay, so we have two divided by one third, and then that's going to equal. So we're thinking how many thirds in one whole? There would be three in one whole, so that means we would end up with six. But again, let's get that tape diagram out. So here we have our three equal pieces. So here shows the, we, if you will, the zero, okay, the one pound, and up here the two pounds. And then you can see that each pound has been divided into thirds, therefore there's six. Again, we always want to keep trying to model mathematics in many different ways. This is very important. It's mathematical practice number four. It states how we should Mult, um, model mathematics. Let me go ahead and line this up. All right, because I want my tape diagram and my number line to be equal. So let's do the same thing using. So here we have zero. Here's our one, and here's our two. One pound, two pounds. Well, let's count these in thirds. So this is zero over three. Here's one third. Here would be two thirds. Three thirds, so we know is equal to one whole. Now we have four thirds. We have five-thirds, and we have six-thirds. Now you can see by looking at this uh, with our diagram, with our tape diagram, how it's very closely related to uh, our actual number line. Not much difference at all. It also shows us the fractions that go with that. So how, again, how can we check our work? Well, we can check our work with the algorithm. We said that two divided by one-third was equal to six. Let's go ahead and take our quotient, which is 6, then. We should be able to multiply that by right, the divisor, which was 1 third. Okay, and that's going to equal 6 over 3. If you multiply the 6 times the 1, you have 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. Did it bring us back to our dividend? Indeed, it did. A way of checking our work. And at the same time, modeling for mathematics every time. Do you notice one really big pattern, and we mentioned this earlier on, is how our number, our quotient, is getting larger each time. Here it was 6, here it's 4. So each time our quotient is getting larger, what do you think is going to happen if we choose a fraction of 1 fourth? Now 1 fourth, is that larger or smaller than 1 third? We just did 1 third. Many of you might want to quickly yell out, it's the smaller number, it's one-third, it's one-third, because there's a three on the denominator. But that's not true. We know that we have three pieces cut equally, and there's only one of those three equal pieces. So actually, three is a larger fraction, and you could show that by drawing that fraction out. So my prediction then would be, if it's going to follow this pattern, and again, another mathematical practice talks about always looking for structure in math, and this is the structure. Uh, and the pattern in, in math for us to see what's going to happen. So I say that the actual uh, quotient now is going to be even larger than the last one.
let's go ahead and write the problem down. So we had the two pounds still acting as our dividend. We're dividing that size group of one quarter, and that's going to equal a certain quantity. Let's see if we can't just leave that blank for the time being. Now we can mark. These were already preset for you. So we still have that two pounds, so that must be the one pound. Here's the two pounds. And now we have quarters. And we can actually see that, well, there's one, two, three, four quarters in one hole. So then four quarters in one hole would be four times two, since we have two pounds. We would end up with, you got it, eight. Would be eight bags. All right, let's get our number line. And, okay, so that looked matched up pretty, pretty well. This is obviously zero. This was our one pound, this was our two pounds. And we have quarters now. We can look at that and say, well, that's zero over four. That would be one quarter, two quarters, which we know is the same as one half, three quarters. This is four over four. And then over here we have eight fourths. Now how can we check our answer? Same thing, we take our quotient, which is 8, we can multiply it back to our divisor, which is 1 quarter. Now we have, you can think of it as 8 times 1 if you want, over 4. That means the same. That's going to equal 8 over 4. And of course, 8 divided by 4 equals 2. And that's what that is right here. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. Isn't this fun? I mean, it's almost really, really easy as well. So if this is half the number she needs to make pecan pies, how many pounds will she need? What would the division sentence be here? Right, some of you notice it's not division, huh? It's multiplication. It's like two twos, which that's four. So the multiplication number sentence here would be two times two, which equals four. Well, wait a second, hold on. Let's try to write a division expression for this whole number situation. All right, let me just write this off to the side. I'm going to write up here, just 4 times something equals 8. Now, of course, what would the division expression be for this? Well, it would be 8 divided by 4, wouldn't it? And we know that equals 2. So let's go ahead and look at that then. Well, then that same 1 half times something equals 2. So let's try the same process for this problem. Give me the division uh, expression. Yeah, it's going to be 2 divided by 1 half. And the complete equation would be 2 divided by 1 half equals 4. So if this is 1 half the number she needs to make pecan pies, how many pounds will she need? Well, she's going to need four pounds of pecans, right? Let's go ahead and show this as, as a model. This would be like showing this as what we don't know. So here we have two. So two represents, in this case, is that she has two pounds of pecans, but it's just half the number she needs. So we're showing the two, and this is the half. And of course, she's going to need another two, which is going to help us get to what that total amount was. So two divided by that one-half we did earlier, is equal to two times two, which equals four. And that gives us back to our unknown. And we could do the same thing with our number line. Let's go on to another problem. Okay, here in this case, it says she buys two pounds of pecans. Again, if this is one-third the number she needs to make pecan pies, how many pounds will she need? Well, again, we're looking at that. You may see this already. Ah, I have two, and you're thinking, oh, that's six because we have, that's only a third, so if we had three thirds, that would be six. So let's go ahead and write that division sentence again. So this is like saying two divided then by the pounds, right? By one third is equal to six. Well, why is this true? Well, if we're, if we're looking for a whole number of pounds, see two is a third, so we divide it by a third, See, now I still think of it as multiplication, though, and I do in my mind, you probably do too. Two times three equals six, which is what we may have done initially. I know that I did. However, the problem doesn't mention three. It says a third. So two divided by one-third is equal to two times three. And so, of course, the 
by dividing by a third is the same as multiplying by the 3. So that's kind of significant here. So I'm going to write this down. So dividing by a third, floppy, whoops, okay, is the same as multiplying uh, by 3. And we, could, and we could use our tape diagram again and our number line to show that that's true. So let's go on to an, a, a new problem here. Okay, we have a problem with Tommy. Okay, Tommy. Tommy wants to cut a quarter foot length from a board that is five feet long. How many boards can he cut? Well, um, first thing we need to know is what is the length of the board that Tommy has to cut? And we know that. That's five feet long. So we have to divide. The division sentence must be within five feet divided by a quarter. So I can draw five holes and cut each hole into fourths. Then I can count how many fourths are in five holes. Okay, here I have my holes. I'll write them down. So here's one hole, nothing over here, two, three, four, and five. Okay, that shows that five feet long. And then I need to put them in quarters. And as you can see, the dotted lines there represent my quarters in each hole. Now. How many, how many quarter feet are in one foot? Well, you can see here we have, and now I have 4 over 4, and we can keep on going. 5 over 4, now we have a fraction that's greater than 1, and that's true. 6 over 4. Eleven over 4. 16 over 4. And look at that. Now we have 20 over 4. Okay, here we go. So we have 20 over 4. So now we have 5 divided by this. Our, our, our expression was 5 feet divided by a quarter foot length is what Tommy wants. And that we now know is going to equal 20. We have 20 pieces, 20 one quarter foot lengths. Now, we know that the multiplication sentence to represent that is we can take that quotient, which here is 20, we can multiply it by the divisor, which was 1 quarter, which is the same as 20 times 1 over 4, which is 20 over 4, which equals 5 feet. And you see I have a number line down here. We could take the number line and show the same thing, which is what I did here, but I just did it on the tape diagram. My friends, a very, very whew, lengthy, maybe even intense math video. But it has come to an end. So, you can breathe. You can unbuckle your seatbelt. My friends, as always, thanks for your participation. Now, live long and prosper.